Do you use 20 round magazines in your AR-15? In The Walking Dead, did you think that Negan was the hero? Are you a FUD? Do you believe that if you tourniquet off a limb that you're then gonna have to amputate it? Do you think that uh, three people make up a fire team? Do you not use the four rules of gun safety and go for some other rule variation? Do you dream of a post-apocalyptic America where you are a feudal lord who enslaves your neighbors through threats of starvation and confiscates their handguns, all the while slowly building their resentment so they get out the guillotines and kill you? If you answered yes to these questions, then stay tuned because I've got the book for you. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we are back with another edition of Tactical Book Review. Today's book is Prepared and Armed Team Shooting Tactics for Home Defense by Mr. Joseph Terry. Now, if you can't tell during the introduction, I don't really like this book. In fact, if I'm honest, it is the worst book that I have reviewed on this channel so far. And we'll talk about why that is. I came across this book on Amazon uh, randomly as I was looking for other books. It had a handful of good reviews. I mean, there was only like a handful of reviews and they were, they were all positive. And the, the title intrigued me. And uh, so I therefore got it because I thought, huh, that's an interesting concept. I'm curious to see what this is about. To be fair, and I think the main reason that I don't like this book is that this book uh, isn't really a tactical book. This book should be subtitled like, Preparing your shooty shoot fantasy for the WROL world. This is really a prepper's book. This is not a tactical shooter's uh, book. Th this is for preparing for the time when there is uh, temporary or permanent, I would argue this book leans more towards the permanent, uh, erasure of society and the rule of law and order. And so then how do you protect your house uh, in that in that time. I'm not here to slam on the prepper community in general. I mean, it's not necessarily my bag, but you know, like that, that's, that's, if that's your thing, go for it, knock yourself out. I'm just telling you that this book, when it comes to doing the shooty shoots, isn't really helpful. First off, just let me say that there are some good things in this book. Uh, I do think he has some unique ideas uh, about things at certain points. Like for example, uh, he suggests um, having a garden cart. That way if you have to load some bags in it and uh, some people and you have to travel long distances, you can do that with just a big garden cart, these big hand push carts. And I thought, oh, that's, that's an interesting little nugget. I'll take that. And there are some other little nuggets in here that I think are, are interesting and, and just kind of give a different perspective and that I can appreciate. I also like the way he structures the chapters. Um, he writes the chapter about whatever it is he's writing about and then at the end he has these little sections for like exercises and things you can do to try to apply the concepts from this chapter. Uh, so like one of them, for example, is like when you're trying to figure out who your, you know, prepping community is going to be basically, he says, go on a camping trip. Everyone go on a camping trip together and you're going to get a good feel if you're going to be able to work in, in adverse conditions or not. And I thought, huh, that's a good idea. You know, I should do that. So th there are some things in here that I definitely can appreciate, but by and large, it's bad news. Let's talk why. First of all, he gets off on this fire team thing and it's building your fire team to defend your house and, and you know, again, societal collapse. And for whatever reason, he lands on the number three as the minimum number that you need to defend a residence. In my opinion, he hasn't really explained very well how he got there. I, I didn't really get a firm understanding of that. Uh, additionally, I know that, you know, we're using the term fire team here loosely, but four guys is a fire team. And there's a reason for that because it conveniently breaks down into two buddy pairs. Three guys doesn't. And that's a problem when you start to try to do other stuff that he talks about in the book. There's a reason that we've run for four-man fire teams for the past, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years, something like that. And I don't think that number should really be screwed with without good reason. Having three, having three guys on a fire team is inherently awkward, and I just think it provides more issues. If he would have said six, six is the minimum number, then I could get behind that because now, of course, you've got three maneuver elements, but they're buddy pairs, and that makes a significant 
difference. There's other little things in here that I just don't like. Like he constantly refers to having 20 round mags in your AR-15. And I don't know anybody who is a serious shooter with their rifle who carries 20 round mags. That's just weird. Now maybe it's just a preference thing and you're gonna come at me because I'm an elitist jerk. But that's weird and I don't like it. And I don't know anyone who actually carries that. Why would you ever carry 20 in the gun when you can carry a real magazine with 30? He doesn't use the four rules of gun safety. He it looks like I would say goes after kind of the NRA kind of three rules of gun safety, which would make sense if he was a firearms instructor. I'm assuming he then had some kind of NRA police firearms instructor certification, which you can get. Uh, and then he goes after it that way. And he continues down the NRA way of doing things by telling people that when you're introducing them to guns, you should have them disassemble it and reassemble it and disassemble it and point out all the parts and say what they mean and say what they're called and, and then reassemble it and be able to do it, and I kid you not, blindfolded. And I'm just sitting here thinking, listen, I've taught, I don't know how many people to shoot that have never shot a gun before, but a lot, a significant number. And I never had them disassemble anything. You know what I did? I put the gun in their hands, we did some dry fire, we worked on stance and grip and sight alignment and sight picture, and then we shot the gun. Because that's how you teach people how to shoot. They gotta shoot the gun. You, you, gotta, get the, you gotta get the reps in, either dry or real, preferably both. And, and that's how people are gonna get, one, enjoy it and get excited about shooting that gun and learn how to shoot it. And two, they're gonna get good. I've had brand new people, never touched a gun before, and all of a sudden they are able to ring steel at 40, 50 yards with a suppressed 22 caliber pistol. Why? Because we just shot the gun and they listened to me. Now, again, that's just my context in normal times and I understand he's talking about, you know, when the world's falling apart here, but still, I'm not buying it. I think I really should have been tipped off when he lists in the combat ruck that you're supposed to have on all the time, which isn't a bad idea, that's, that's a totally fine idea, that one of the things you should have in there is a 22 caliber conversion kit with a couple hundred rounds of 22. Because in my combat ruck, when I run out of AR-15 rounds, I'm gonna convert it to 22. Like, I literally, I don't understand that, and he never explained it. And so I'm just left wondering, why on earth would you ever do that? Why wouldn't you just carry more AR-15 mags? One of the most concerning things in the book, and one of the things he never really explains, is shooting past your teammate. He just references a couple times, like that's something you're gonna have to do. And I'm not really sure what he means. If he means like, okay, we're just gonna be in like, you know, fire, fire lanes, and uh, you know, me and my buddy are over here, and we're shooting, and we're moving, and you and your buddy are over there, and you're shooting, and you're moving, and we're, you know, we're leapfrogging, or we're doing some kind of fire maneuver, either attacking or regressing, or whatever. If, if that's what he means, hey, fine, okay, yeah, because you know, they're technically downrange, right? They're 10, 15 yards ahead of you, and you're shooting this way, and okay, I get that. But that's not very clear. And I'm not sure, I don't think that's what he means. I'm pretty sure what he means is like we're all in a room together and you're like right here and I'm like shooting past you to get some bad guy down there. And that violates every single CQB rule I have ever heard in any class I've ever taken and any instructor I've ever watched. Nobody, and I mean nobody, teaches you to do that. You've gotta earn the shot. That, that's a very common thing. You gotta move your feet, get on line with your buddy and then you can shoot. That, that's like a huge, huge safety thing. And because he doesn't explain it very well, that could potentially be a huge safety hazard in the hands of someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And if they take him to mean what I think he means, then that's not good at all. Huge safety violation. And some of the scenarios that he would imagine you applying some of these things in the book, I just think are far-fetched. I mean, look, we just had some of the worst riots in the history of the nation, okay? I lived in Bloomington, Minnesota, which is just south of Minneapolis, when the Minneapolis riots happened. I was, my house was maybe five-ish, five, six miles from like the epicenter of where it was all going down, okay? It wasn't that bad. And what I mean is like in my neighborhood, it was, it was untouched, you know, there wasn't an issue. Um, if, if I hadn't been connected to the internet in the world, I might not have even known what the problem was up in Minneapolis, right? Like that, that's how untouched it was. Now, maybe, you know, there'll be like another Great Depression coming in America and we can talk about that and, and maybe the damage will be more widespread. But it's hard for me to imagine, even now, with as bad as things are, for there to still be complete and total shutdown of like a eight county wide area. I mean, could it happen? Sure, it, it could. 
But I think that's a really low percentage thing, even now, even with how bad things are. And so in that, some of the scenarios he's talking about are things like when your neighborhood or area or whatever has been without food for like two plus weeks, which again, I have a hard time, not that it can happen, just super low percentage, and talking about recruiting your neighbors because they didn't prepare and they don't have food. And, and then he talks about uh, you know, giving them a certain like food ration a day, which is basically like a starvation ration, and confiscating their handguns because they shouldn't be allowed to have those around you. And then you're only gonna feed them so much in exchange for their work, and you're gonna set up some ground rules, and you're in charge, and they're not in charge because you have the food. I mean, it's just weird. Like, it's just, he goes, into, he goes on and on, and I'm reading this, and I'm thinking like, in what reality has this happened? I mean, even when Katrina happened, some things like this didn't happen. Did cops go around and illegally confiscate your guns? Oh, you better believe it, and that's a huge problem. But that's not what I'm talking about. Even then, even in some of the worst disasters in modern history, these kinds of scenarios he's talking about a low, low percentage. And he talks about other things like attacking. Um, let's say you were displaced from your house by an organized attack mob with, that was armed with guns and how you're going to attack and retake your house. A and things like this that I'm just like, listen, I don't think that that's one a very high percentage chance. I mean, we're super, I, I consider myself a low percentage guy, but this is super low percent. And two, these aren't feasible. It feels like a person who read some books, didn't entirely grasp all the concepts necessarily, and then kind of applied them in this different place and just used some of the words and some of the themes that they've learned, but didn't really understand on a deep level. That's what it feels like to me uh, from reading the book. And I don't know this author at all, don't know anything about him, not trying to slander the guy. I'm just telling you what I think of it. Because on that line, he throws terms around that aren't necessarily the proper use of the term and doesn't reference the original meaning of the term, and that just bothers me. For example, he uses the term mad minute, and he uses that term to talk about uh, when your house is being attacked, you need to put out a high volume of fire and shoot a bunch. And he talks about the mad minute, which is two mag dumps of 20 round magazines. Why, why are they 20 round magazines? So you dump out these two magazines uh, and that's your mad minute. And I'm like, okay, but that term comes from an ambush. Like when we initiate an ambush and you're, you're dumping rounds in an ambush, uh, that, that's the mad minute because you're trying to kill everyone in the kill zone. That's the mad minute. And even then, I think it goes back further to the British uh, when they were running bolt action rifles and they could run like, it was something like 12 rounds a minute. Maybe it was a little higher than that. Um, and that was a mad minute because they could they look how fast they could shoot and work this bolt gun. I'm sorry, I just don't like using terms out of context. It just, it just bothers me. He has chapters like basic skills, which are like basic, which is fine. And then advanced skills, which in my opinion are just basic skills. And I can't really tell the two chapters apart. And so I don't understand, I, I hate the term advanced skills in general. I think that's in most of the time in shooting a garbage term. Uh, I think it's pretty much all basics and we just need to do the basics well. You ask anybody who's at the highest level of anything and they just do the basics well. There's really advanced skills, it's really mostly a, a myth in my opinion. At the end of the day, like I said earlier, I think my main issue is it's not a tactical book. It, it's a prepper's book by someone who thinks they have a good grasp on tactics and shooting. And based on what I've read in the dozens of other books I've done on this channel, the I don't know how many hours of classes I've taken, I'm gonna go with no. This is not an application of tactics that's correct or that's helpful or that really is gonna be able to get you where you wanna be. So that is my less than favorable review for prepared and armed Team Shooting Tactics for Home Defense by Joseph Terry. Hope that's helpful. Do brave deeds and endure.